Hi everybody, in this chapter on six, uh, chapter 6, we'll be going through this thing called graphing techniques. They are all together a total of 18 video clips and actually it's broken up into three parts. The first part being actually the standard curve sketching techniques. The second part being the conics, where we actually teach you how to go through uh, the sketching of standard curves like ellipse, circles, as well as hyperbolas. And then the last section will be focusing on the transformation of curves. So in this first video clip 6.1, we'll be going through curve sketching techniques, running through all the various steps towards sketching the curve. Of course, we all know with the introduction of graphing calculator in your uh, syllabus, we can actually sketch the curve if the entire equation of the curve is given to us. But however, what the Cambridge examiners uh, are expecting to see in your solutions is that they must make sure that you know how to find things like exist intercepts, how to find stationary points, and how to actually find the asymptotes of the curve. So in this first video clip, we'll be going through the various steps of how to go about sketching a curve. Now let's download the 6.1 on this uh, handout. And the first part we'll be going through are characteristics of a curve. The first characteristic of a curve is this thing called exist intercept. Okay. Now what are exist intercepts? We refer to the x intercepts and the y intercepts. Okay. Now of course x intercepts refers to the point where the curve cuts the x exists. And so we'll be looking for y equals 0 and we want to find the x value. Okay. Then how about the y intercept? Of course, y intercept is the point where the curve cuts the y exits. And so we will be actually letting x to be equal to 0 and we want to find the y value. Okay. So let me just give an example. Suppose we have this curve y equals to 3x plus 2 over x minus 1 and x plus 3. Now what are the x-intercepts? The in x-intercepts are by putting y equals to 0. And so this means that the numerator has to be 0. And so that means that x equals to minus 2 third. So the coordinates of the x-intercept will be minus 2 third comma 0. How about the y-intercept? To find the y-intercept of this curve, we actually go and let x equal to 0. And this time round, your y would be 2 over minus 3. So it's also minus 2 third. Okay. So therefore, the y-intercept would be 0 and minus 2 third here. Okay. So that's how we find the exist intercept. The second part of the characteristic of a curve that you're expected to know is the other asymptotes. Generally, there are three types of asymptotes. The first one is this thing called a vertical asymptote. And the second type is this thing called the horizontal asymptote. And lastly, is this thing called oblique asymptote. Okay, these are the three asymptotes that you are expected to know how to identify in any curve. Okay, so let's take a look at back to the same example here. Uh, the equation given shown here. Uh, it shows that y equals to 3x plus 2 over x minus 1 and x plus 3. Now, what are vertical asymptotes? Vertical asymptotes are actually the x value where the curve approaches plus infinity or minus infinity. That means the curve actually goes very, very large or very, very large negative value. So that means that we are asking ourselves, what is the x value that makes y very, very huge? That means making this denominator goes very, very small. If this denominator goes very, very small, 
it will actually make the entire y value goes very large, whether it's plus infinity or minus infinity. So vertical asymptotes are obtained in general for this kind of rational fractions as making the denominator equal to zero. Like this. And that of course gives you x equal one or x equals minus three. But of course I must admit that not all vertical asymptotes are found by letting the denominator equal zero. Uh, one such example is the ln function. Okay. For the ln function, if you sketch the curve using uh, the GC graphing calculator, you will realize the graph looks something like that. Okay. And this actually has is a vertical asymptote. x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Okay. But besides some of these special graphs, in general, okay, vertical asymptotes are obtained by making the denominator equal 0. Okay. And how to identify, how to draw the vertical asymptote on your graph? You will actually represent it by a vertical dotted line. A vertical dotted line. With the only exception, of course, of the x, uh, y axis. If the vertical asymptote happens to be y axis, we cannot draw the dotted line. We probably leave it as x equals 0, indicating that this is a vertical asymptote. Okay. Now let's talk about the second type of asymptote, which we call the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Let me give an example here. I modify the equation a little. Okay. Now horizontal asymptote is uh, exists if the degree of the numerator equals or less than the degree of the denominator. Okay. So in this example, the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is also 2. So when the degree of the numerator equals degree of the denominator or the degree of the numerator is less than degree of the denominator, the horizontal symptom exists. So in this example, right, if you use long division to simplify this, and we will actually get the following. Okay, using long division. Now, what actually is horizontal symptom? Horizontal symptom is the y value, okay, when x approaches infinity or minus infinity. So in this example, if we let x goes to infinity, okay, this numerator over the denominator will approach zero. And so the entire curve will be that y tends to three. Okay. Then how about the case when x tends to minus infinity? In that kind of situation, this entire curve, also this portion of it, of course, also tends to zero. And likewise, y tends to 3. Right? In this case, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 3. Okay? Likewise, just like in the case of vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote is represented by horizontal dotted line on your sketch. Okay? Finally, we'll go through the third type of asymptotes called the oblique asymptote. Okay, uh, for the oblique asymptote, all right, uh, I give the similar example. Okay, so in this example, the degree of the numerator is 2 and the degree of the denominator is 1. So the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator. When that happens, oblique asymptote exists. And again, how to find oblique asymptote? is done in a similar way, just like in the horizontal asymptote. That means we use long division to change it to a proper fraction. And if you do so, using long division, you'll get the following. Okay. So if you let x goes to infinity, okay, this time around, the y doesn't approach a constant value, just like the, the case of the horizontal asymptote. It approaches a line, this line here. So if you are to draw the equation y equals 3x plus 3, the curve will approach this line when x becomes very large. Okay? 
Likewise, if you let x goes to minus infinity, this term will actually go to 0 as well, and so y still tends to 3x plus 3. So the oblique asymptote is y equals to 3x plus 3 in this example. Okay. So far, we have already seen the exist intercepts as well as the three asymptotes. Okay. Let's recollect these vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are the x value where the curve goes to infinity or minus infinity. And that x value, of course, has to be a real number. So we actually went through some, one example of that and where we actually show to you that the vertical asymptote is generally obtained by letting the denominator go to 0 and find the x value. And for the horizontal asymptote, it's actually obtained by actually first using long division to change to a proper fraction. But before you do that, take note that the degree of the numerator is either equals or less than the degree of the denominator. Okay? And finally, the oblique asymptote is obtained by doing the same thing just like horizontal asymptote. The exception is that the numerator's degree is actually one more than the degree of the denominator and it approaches a straight line. Okay? Now the third part of the characteristic of curves that we are interested to deal with is this thing called stationary points. Okay? Now stationary points, we all know, are the points where dy dx equal to 0. Okay? And there are generally three types of stationary points. The first type, of course, is this thing called maximum point. And the second type is this thing called minimum point. And finally, is this thing called stationary point of inflection. Now, how do we actually identify uh, such a point. After you let dy dx equal 0 to find all the x coordinates where dy dx equals 0, you are supposed to identify whether the stationary point is a maximum point or a minimum point or stationary point of inflection. There are generally two types of tests, one being the second derivative test and the second type being the first derivative test. We will run through these two tests in this video. Okay, now for a secondary test based on the handouts, it says that if dy dx at a particular value, okay, a for example, is 0, that means that it is a stationary point. And at the same time, okay, d2y dx squared at the same value is going to be greater than 0. In that kind of situation, the point A, right, and of course the y value at x equal A would be a, max, a minimum point. Huh? Would be a minimum point. At the same time, if the y dx at x equal A is zero, and the two y dx square at x equals to A is less than zero, okay then this point will then be a maximum point. Okay. However, the only problem about this secondary test is when d2y dx squared equal to 0. Because when that happens, we cannot actually conclude whether it's a maximum or minimum or stationary point inflection. Okay. So in that kind of situation, we have to revert to this thing called the first derivative test. So what is this first derivative test? Okay. So for the first derivative test, it says the following, right? Okay. So of course, we look at the value just to the left of A. Okay, the value at A and the value at slightly to the right of A. 
Okay. We look at the signs okay, of dy dx, whether it's positive or negative. Okay. Now, if the value is to the left, it's actually going to be negative and positive on the right side and zero on the middle. Okay. This actually is a behavior of a minimum point. Why minimum point? Because if you look at a minimum point here, at this point, the gradient is zero. To the left of this point, the gradient is negative. Okay. And to the right of it, the slope is positive. Okay. So if you do such a test, you, and you realize that to the left of it is negative, and to the right of it is positive, then we call that a minimum point. Okay. However, if my dy dx does the reverse, positive here, zero here, and negative here. Okay. Then it behaves like a maximum point. Because in the case of a maximum point, the gradient here is zero. To the left of it is positive and to the right of it is negative. In that kind of situation, of course, we say it's a maximum point. How about stationary point inflection? For stationary point inflection, it has two types. Okay? One is of this, one is of this. Okay? So at both points here, the dy dx equals zero. Okay? However, for this type of stationary point inflection, the gradient is positive on both sides of A. And for the second type of stationary point inflection, to the left and to the right of the point x equal A is negative gradient. So in other words, if the dy dx has both positive or both negative at the same time, then it will be what we call the stationary point of inflection. Okay, so with that actually going through the three main characteristics that you must know in the sketching of curve. The first one is axis intercept, the second one are the asymptotes and the third one are stationary points. Okay? And in the next video, we'll be going through some examples in the sketching of curve. Thank you.